In this tutorial, we'll be exploring the Adobe 3D and Materials effect to create a fun graphic for a bagel company. I have a blank A4 document ready to go and the first step that we need to take is to create the components that we're going to be using within the scene. First up, I'm going to start by creating the bagel shape. And I'm going to do this by using the ellipse tool. And this can be found in the shape tool menu. Now with the ellipse selected, I'm going to head up to object, scroll down to path and down to offset path. I want this path to be in the center of the ellipse. So I'll set the offset to minus 25, maybe even minus 35. Awesome, so I'm happy with that. Now to create the hole in the center of the shape, I'm going to select both circles and I'm going to head to Pathfinder and select minus front. And this is going to result in a singular compound shape. Great, now let's give the shape a brown color and remove the black stroke. I'm going to need two of these shapes for the top of the bagel and for the bottom of the bagel. So I'm going to duplicate the shape and to do this quickly, I'm going to hold down shift and the option key and drag out. Let's put these to one side for now. For the second component, I'm going to create a slice of tomato. Once again, I'm going to be doing this by using very basic shapes to create it. The third component is an egg shape, which I have created using two circles. Now to manipulate the shape of the egg, I'm going to head to the toolbar menu and select the Warp tool. This can be found underneath the Width tool menu. Very gently, I'm just going to go around the edges of the outer circle and manipulate or warp the edges. Any of the sharper sections I can smooth over later using the Smooth tool, which you can find under the Pencil tool. Great, so we're almost done with our components. We have just one left, and that is the Bacon Shape Rasher. So creating these was super easy. I used the line segment tool and created three lines of the same length. I'm going to make sure that these align perfectly. And select them all. Next, head up to effect, scroll down to warp, or is it distort and transform? There we go, distort and transform and scroll down to zigzag. Let's set the points to smooth and update the ridges per segment. I'm going to be setting mine to an odd number and this is going to help keep things nice and symmetrical. And once you're happy, select OK. Awesome, so I'm going to set this aside with the other shapes for now. I'll be needing three of these, so I'll duplicate and then redo the last action, which was duplicate and move by selecting command plus the letter D on my keyboard. We now have a variety of components for our composition. So it's now time for the fun stuff. Let's dive into the 3D and materials effect. I'm going to duplicate the bagel shape instead of using one of these to the left. I like to keep my original shapes intact and I'm going to place this into the scene first. Okay, if you can't see the 3D and materials option in your panels, head up to window and select 3D and materials. Underneath the objects section of the panel, there are four types of 3D effects to choose from and you'll be selecting them based on your desired outcome. So because I require a softer, more rounded outcome for the bagel, I'm going to be using the inflate effect for this particular shape. And we'll be using some of the other effects a little bit later on. Now under the rotation section in the panel, there are a number of options to enable you to rotate objects. We can either use the presets that are available or we can use vertical, horizontal and circular rotation options, which are directly below. I'm going to manually reposition the base of the bagel until I'm happy. 
and this is the time to really begin experimenting. Awesome, so I'm going to pull in a second bagel shape for the top half. Once again, apply the inflate effect. We need that nice rounded shape. I'll reposition using a preset as well as adjusting it manually. The goal is to create a sense of movement throughout the scene. Great. Now, another option you have when using the 3D effect is to apply a range of materials which serve as textures. Let's apply a slight texture to the top of the bagel. Select the bagel, head to materials in the panel, and I like the look of this slightly grainy leather material. I'll select the option. Okay, so that's been applied. Don't be alarmed, we can adjust some of the main parameters in the panel to make this appear a little bit more less dramatic. First things first, let's update this brown colour. Now I want to set this to the original colour, so the bagel brown slightly orange colour. Awesome, a huge improvement already. Now all I have to do is go through the remaining parameters and adjust them until I'm satisfied with the results. Again, this is the perfect time to experiment and of course remember to save your work often. Perfect, so far so good. Now the third section in the panel is dedicated to lighting. And there's a number of presets to explore, including a diffused effect and lighting from the top left and top right angles. You can also change the color of the lighting if you choose to. For now, I'm going to be sticking to the standard preset. Okay, looking great so far. Let's pull in the other components and apply some effects. If you have layered objects, sometimes it's best to separate them and apply the 3D effect individually. This is going to help give you better results. So I'm going to separate the seeds from the remainder of the shape and I'll group the remainder of the shape together as it consists of two separate circles. And I want to keep these together to create one 3D object. Now the remainder of the components are flatter in comparison to the bagel, which means that this time around, I'll need to use a different 3D effect. This time around, I'll be using the extrude effect to give the tomato slice some depth, but not too much. Let's reduce the depth and change the rotation. Okay, now I'm going to apply the same effect to the seeds. I purposely separated them because I wanted the seeds to protrude slightly out from the rest of the tomato and this is going to make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay let's reposition and I'll right click to bring this shape forward and above the bagel. And now I can simply duplicate these and place them throughout the scene. One important thing to note is in the appearance panel, you can temporarily disable the 3D setting whilst you apply any changes to the graphic. For example, you might want to update colors. This is going to speed the process up significantly versus applying certain changes to objects with the 3D effect switched on. Now for the egg component, I'll be using two settings, one for the rounded yolk and another for the white. For the white, let's head to object and select extrude. And reduce the depth. And I'm going to use a rotation preset from the menu. As mentioned, for the egg yolk, I'm going to be using the inflate effect. And this is to get that nice rounded effect.
I'm going to make sure to use the same rotation preset so this sits perfectly on top of the rest of the egg. And finally, let's experiment with and adjust some of the lighting settings. And last but not least, let's apply an effect to the bacon. The first thing I'm going to do, as I forgot to do this earlier, is expand the appearance because as it is, these are simply three lines with effects applied. Remember, we applied the zigzag effect. Now, to expand the appearance, I'm going to select the lines, head up to object and scroll down to expand appearance. So this has essentially made the wave effect more permanent. Next, I'll head to path and outline stroke to convert the waves into individual objects. Okay, for this component, I'm going to use the extrude option and once again, adjust the depth. And let's play with the perspective. One final thing that I'd like to add is a swirly kind of source element. I'm going to select the brush tool and perhaps a rounded, slightly thicker brush. Now let's use the inflate effect for this and adjust the lighting. Now I'll place this throughout the scene and adjust accordingly. Again, remember you can disable the 3D effect in the appearance panel and make any changes to the element. Okay, so once you are finally finished, the last thing to do is generate a high quality preview. I'm going to select each of the elements and I'm going to do this individually because there are a number of components here. If your design's a little bit more simpler, you can potentially group your elements together and uh, complete this one time only. And I'm going to head up, select the real time preview button in the top right hand corner of the panel. 